So I've had people ask me a couple times how I created this image and um, with the light rays. The light rays seem to be pretty popular and I've had a lot of people just um, calling me a bunch trying to figure out how I'm doing it. And it's, it's really not that hard. So just here's here's kind of a quick little deal on how I did it. Um, all these shots I shot, um, obviously she was, I shot her in a studio just for being able to control the situation a little better. Uh, the actual graveyard I shot on location and just uh, what I was doing is um, this was at night and we were using flashlights to illuminate the different areas of the image. I shot probably four different images on this shot and then we sandwich them together to sort of get the desired effect on that. Um, and then we just basically will add the light rays and the shadow and all that as we need to, to um, once we have it so we can kind of have everything working in unison together. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll just go ahead and take this image and uh, just delete all these layers and just leave the graveyard. So what we're working with is a graveyard and an actual young lady we photographed in our studio. I need to create the light rays. So that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go open a new file and I'm just going to open a uh, one that's black. Let's do an 8x10 at 300 dpi and um, when we do this we want to make sure that um, when we finish that all the light rays are away from the border and that's just so we don't have a harsh edge on any of the light rays when we're putting them in the scene so I'm gonna sort of blow this up a little bit and work on the top edge top center of the screen um, just so that we can kind of control it work in a smaller area so we have plenty of black around it so I'm gonna go to my paintbrush make sure I have white selected um, you can do a, a D to D as far as a default to make them go back to black and white if they're not black and white and then press X until you get the one you want and we're gonna grab a small brush here and what we're gonna do is create a bunch of little white dots um, we're sort of at the top of the image so we're gonna kinda of come in here and just create all these little white dots and it doesn't have to be consistent. You kind of want them sort of in a, in a specific area, though. And they can overlap a little bit. Um, it, it, it's not real critical how it is, because um, what this does is the inconsistency is what helps make the the uh, sort of the bands in the um, in the light rays. So once we sort of have what we're looking looking for, um, we're going to come up here and we're going to actually come up here where it says filter, come to filter, and go to blur and go down to radial blur. We want to make sure that we have zoom selected, not spin. So we're going to select zoom, make sure we're dialed all the way up to 100%. And then basically what we can do is, is um, we want the rays coming straight down. So we're going to basically drag this up to the center. We have them in the center and we're going to click OK. And what that does is that starts the streaking. So now what we're going to do is we want to continue that. So we're going to go back up to filter, hit radio blur again. And we are going to do this a bunch of times. So I'm going to take a quick break from the video and keep doing this just so I'm not burning up time doing this. But all I'm doing is just doing this over and over again to create the rays. Okay, so I've been working on this for quite a long time. It generally takes, you know, 30 or 40 times. Uh, what I did is actually created an action to speed up the process so I can just hit the button and it runs it like five or six times in a row so I just did that and you can create actions to do that if anybody doesn't know how to do that if you uh, want to message me I can sort of explain how to do that or set up a little video for that if nobody knows how to do that um, but it's pretty simple so basically what I've done is I've continued to just do this over and over again to sort of stretch those rays out um, what happens generally though is you end up it ends up getting lighter so your ray isn't quite as bright as it used to be. So to lighten that up all you have to do is come up to image adjustments and go to brightness and contrast and then what you can do is you can kind of bump that up. Um, generally whenever I'm doing anything in Photoshop uh, whether it's a filter or any other sort of anything I'm doing I will take it too far because I always like to have a choice and make sure that I took it too far and say oh that's obviously not gonna work and then dial it back so what I'm gonna do is just click OK on that that's a really b bright ray which I probably won't use but let's just go with that for now I'm gonna click on the move tool and grab this image and drop drop it over the graveyard I do need to resize it so I hit uh, Command T, which is free transform, and we're going to basically be putting it like right in here. And I'll click OK. So now what I, what I need to do is basically I want to get rid of the black, because obviously the black isn't working. So we're going to go to our blend modes over here and 
our blend mode to set it normal. We're going to go down to screen and what that will do is drop off all the black. So now we've kind of created this, this light ray that we can move around independently and put it where we need to. I'm going to go ahead and label that as ray. So I just in case we do anything kind of funky later. And at, now, now right now that's too bright. So what's nice about doing everything in layers is you can dial back the opacity at this point and sort of bring it to the, uh, to the intensity that you'd like to have it. And uh, what I like about the, the rays is that it sort of gives you the illusion that it's um, not just a solid white from side to side and you have the bands in the in the, the rays which is really nice and that's why I like this effect so much so now we have that effect sort of in there um, we, we will make some adjustments here coming up but let's go ahead and grab the girl now um, I have her already separated on another layer um, I shot her specifically for this I'm just gonna drag her over and drop her in here we're going to resize her because we want her sort of the sort of a more workable size where she's in the photo. We're just going to cl click on that and just sort of hover her up in the air. Now with this, um, we we want it to make it look like the the rays are hitting her. Right now it looks to me like she's in front of the rays. So what we're going to do is actually drag her and put her layer beneath the ray. And it sort of puts her more where the rays look like it's affecting and lighting her a little bit more. Um, at this point, the ray needs to be spread out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command T with this layer selected, the rays, and I'm just going to spread that a little bit to sort of free transform it because I want to make sure that those rays look like they're covering her completely. And then we'll, we'll click that. And then so basically we got that so far. Now what we're missing is we kind of need a shadow in here because without the shadow, it doesn't really tie it into the scene very much. So we're going to come down here and just hit this little icon down here to create a new layer. And we're going to make sure we have black selected. So if we have white, we're going to go ahead and hit the X key, hit the brush so that we'll be painting in black. And we're just going to paint in here sort of roughly what we think that it should look like underneath her which is kind of a guess. <laughs> and we're going to just start with that for now. I'm going to put shadow in here. So that's our shadow. And we're going to, what we're going to do is just dial that shadow back with the opacity and make it fit the scene a little better. Um, we can always drop it below the rays, which will tie it into the scene even more. But then we can't move it because the, I have auto select on here. So as soon as I click on here, it's going to select the rays. So I'm going to keep the shadow above the rays for right now, and we're going to sort of put that where I think it should, should be roughly, make it roughly the size I want. I can do a free transform and do any of this just to sort of be a little more specific to what I think it would be. Now that actually doesn't look too bad to me right now. Um, sometimes I like putting it below the rays so it ties it in a little more, and then we can crank the opacity back up a little bit. Um, but basically, it's just sort of getting a feel for, you know, what feels right. And to me, that's pretty close. So that's just a quick video on how we shot this. Um, everything's kind of independent of itself. Um, the, the rays are kind of cool because it looks like they're, you know, that it's a little more natural as opposed to just having a giant white beam of light um, being consistent from side to side. So um, I really like this effect because of that, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you don't, um, please let me know, you know, what your thoughts are, or if you have a better way to do it, please let me know that too. I always like learning from other people. Um, there's probably a hundred other ways to do this. This is just something I found that works well for me. Uh, so hope you enjoyed it, and uh, make any comments. Thank you for your time.